Hey everybody, my name is Catherine and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. Today I'm going to show you how I made this really pretty Kumo Shibori with a marigold extract dye. But first, let's get into the supplies. Like with all my videos, the supplies are linked down in the description below. So I used two to three yards of cotton fabric. I used an extra strong thread. I used a ruler or a T-square, scissors for cutting, a hot plate, a stock pot that I only use for dyeing, a stir stick that I only use for dyeing, a dusk mask for working with powdered dyes, gloves to protect my hands, a big scale and a micro scale, the marigold extract powder, which I will link down below, I had some old matter that I put into the dye bath. I used alum as a mordant and some iron to modify the color. And I washed everything with Synthopol, also known as dyer's detergent. So first I'm gonna start by folding up my fabric. And this has been pre-washed. I am using 100% cotton. And this is an extra strong thread. The color of this thread is green. And it did transfer a little bit in the final product. So if I were to do this all over again, I would probably make sure to use a white thread just to be extra careful. But for the sake of this video, it's nice to be able to see the thread. So what I'm doing is I'm just pinching up little peaks of the fabric about four inches apart. And then I'm wrapping this thread around the fabric peaks as tightly as I can and it kind of makes a little tentacle. I actually have another video on my channel doing this exact technique with indigo that I will link down in the description below and at the end of this video. It's a very pretty pattern. And if you're interested in learning more about dyeing, be sure to check out my Skillshare classes and you can try Skillshare for free with the links down in the description below. So I'm just going to keep going until I get the whole thing tied up and I'm trying to make the tentacles about the same distance apart so that it's an even pattern. Here's a little close up of what they look like and full disclosure this did take me a few days to do. You don't have to do such a large piece of fabric if you don't want to. So now that I have my fabric all tied up um, I'm going to start to soak it in the mordant. I'm going to be using alum and this is my alum that I had saved. There's some floaty things in the bottom. So that makes me think it's gone bad um, or it has some bacteria growing in it. I am just gonna strain it, honestly, and try to reuse it because um, it's gonna boil anyway. So I'm not really like that stressed out about it. I have, um, more alum here so I might add more because I'm going to need enough to cover all the fabric. This fabric is like pretty substantial. It's a few yards. I'm going to weigh this fabric just to like see how much it weighs and then I'm going to mordant it in the alum and then I'm going to mix up the dye bath and let it simmer all day. So I went ahead and weighed my fabric and it weighs almost a pound. And so now I'm going to get my alum strained into my stock pot. This stock pot is the one that I use only for dyeing. You can see it has some uh, red matter in the bottom of it. So I added the alum I already had that I saved. And now I'm just going to fill it up with water and add about half a cup more of alum. And I'm just going to kind of stir it up with my scrub brush there. <laughs> unofficial stirrer. So I'm using hot water and now I'm going to add my fabric and just make sure it's totally soaked. And if you're interested in learning more about natural dyeing, this is a great book that I would really recommend that talks about mordants and modifiers and I'll put it down in the description below for you. So next I'm going to put this alum solution with the fabric on the heat and let it heat up for an hour. And then I'm gonna let it cool down completely or until it's at least warm. And I'm gonna take it out of my alum solution. 
So I hate to waste things, so I'm going to pour the remaining of my alum solution into a jar and save it for later. And this is the dye that I got from my friend in India. And I have tried the lac and the matter. And both of those have been excellent. So this is the sun yellow. Anyway, it's marigold. So let's tear it one more time. So the instructions say to use 5% of the weight of the fabric. So I converted my weight of the fabric to grams and crunched the numbers and it was 21.25 grams. So I'm doing about 21 grams here. Come on, baby, 21, okay. Whoop, okay, a little bit more, that's fine. So now let's ever so gently put it into my container here. I'm mixing it up in the smaller container first to try to get all the chunks blended into the water. And I am wearing a dusk mask just for safety. And I'm going to put the solution into my stock pot and then fill it up with water the rest of the way. My dye bath is warm and I'm going to put it on high heat, put the fabric in and then warm it up and let it cool down and warm it up and let it cool down and come and check on it about every hour. I'll do this about four or five times or until I like the color. This is a very intense orange color and I'm going to add some ferrous sulfate or iron to my solution here to see what it does. I think it's going to make it a little bit less bright, um, but I'm not 100% sure, so let's see what happens. Oops, sorry. Okay, might want to actually take this out. here and let's just stir it see if we can get it kind of mixed up let's do this Okay guys, so I'm back outside and my pot is starting to steam and I'm gonna put my piece of fabric back in and just see what it looks like. I'm really excited to do this little experiment. So let's get into it. Don't wanna waste any of that dye. Precious dye. Okay, in she goes. It's been heated up on and off for about four or five times now. And I'm going to do something a little bit crazy. And I'm just going to add some of this old matter that I have and see how this turns out. I think it might kind of give it a little bit more of a brownish, rustish color. I let this heat up and cool down a few more times. And you can see it's got a much more sort of brown, neutral type color. So this is warm, but not hot. And what I'm gonna do is just take it out and kind of let it chill for a little bit before washing it. Here's a little close up of how it turned out and I'm just going to let it sit. Now I'm rinsing it out with cold water in my sink and I'm just trying to get all the excess dye out. Next, I'm going to take it apart very carefully with my scissors and I'm just going very slowly. This took a long time. Here's what it looked like before I put it into the washer and I'm going to wash it on hot with Synthropol, aka Dyer's detergent in my washing machine and then dry it on hot. Okay, so here it is. It's been washed and dried, and it's quite a large piece of fabric. 
I'm still kind of a little bit warped from all the tying. Let me know in the comments what you would make out of this fabric. I'm still trying to decide. It's so subtle, um, but it's a pretty color. It's a pretty beige color. And then I got some markings from the green. The thread came through, through all the boiling, which is kind of interesting. It's pretty. I have to just decide what I want to do with it now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and go and follow me on my social medias at Onyx Art Studio. You can also check out my website for my online dyeing workshops. If you like this video, be sure to check out these other videos I have on my channel. I have tons of videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. Be sure to subscribe and show me some love in the comments. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.